Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that concerns every kitchen and every meal food spoilage. Have you ever opened your fridge, only to find a container of once delicious food now giving off an unpleasant odor? Well, you're not alone. In this video, we'll explore the causes of food spoilage, how to prevent it, and some handy tips to keep your kitchen fresh and safe. So, let's get started. What is food spoilage? Food spoilage refers to the deterioration in the quality, taste, texture, and safety of food products, rendering them unappetizing or potentially harmful to consume. This deterioration is primarily caused by the action of microorganisms such as bacteria, molds, and yeasts, as well as enzymes and external factors like oxygen exposure and temperature fluctuations. As a result of food spoilage, the appearance, smell, taste, and nutritional value of the food can be negatively affected, making it unsuitable for consumption. Proper storage, handling, and preservation techniques are essential to prevent or slow down the process of food spoilage. Causes of food spoilage Food spoilage is primarily caused by a combination of factors, including microorganisms, enzymes, oxygen exposure, and temperature fluctuations. Let's delve into each of these causes in more detail. Microorganisms Various types of microorganisms, such as bacteria, molds and yeasts, play a significant role in food spoilage. These microorganisms thrive on the nutrients present in food and break down its components, leading to changes in texture, flavor, and odor. As they metabolize, they produce waste products that can alter the quality of the food and make it unappetizing or unsafe to consume. Enzymes. Enzymes are natural substances present in foods that facilitate chemical reactions. While enzymes are necessary for many biological processes, they can also lead to food spoilage when they catalyze reactions that break down essential nutrients. For instance, enzymes can cause fruits to soften, vegetables to lose their color, and fats to become rancid, resulting in changes in taste, appearance, and nutritional value. Oxygen exposure. Oxygen is necessary for many microorganisms to grow and reproduce. When food is exposed to oxygen, aerobic bacteria can thrive and cause spoilage. This is particularly evident in the browning of cut fruits and vegetables due to the oxidation of their exposed surfaces. Temperature fluctuations. Temperature plays a critical role in the rate of microbial growth and enzymatic activity. Foods stored at temperatures within the danger zone, approximately 4 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius are at a higher risk of spoilage and bacterial growth. Proper refrigeration or freezing can slow down these processes and extend the shelf life of food. Moisture content. High moisture levels in food can create an environment conducive to the growth of spoilage microorganisms. Molds and bacteria, in particular, thrive in damp conditions, leading to mold growth, fermentation, and off flavors. pH level. The acidity or alkalinity pH, of a food can influence microbial growth. Some microorganisms prefer slightly acidic environments, while others thrive in more neutral or alkaline conditions. Manipulating the pH through techniques like pickling or fermenting can help preserve food and inhibit spoilage. Cross-contamination. Introducing harmful microorganisms from one food item to another can lead to rapid spoilage. Proper hygiene practices, such as washing hands, using separate cutting boards for raw meat and produce, and avoiding cross-contact, are crucial to prevent cross-contamination. What kind of microbes are responsible for food spoilage? Bacteria. Pseudomonas species. These aerobic bacteria are known for causing spoilage in meat, poultry, dairy products, and vegetables, often leading to off odors and sliminess. Shawanala species. These bacteria are known for causing spoilage in fish and seafood, resulting in off odors and changes in texture. Lactic acid bacteria. While bacteria of genus Streptococcus, Lactococcus and Pediococcus are important for fermenting foods like yogurt and sauerkraut, they can also lead to spoilage in certain conditions, causing a sour taste and undesirable texture. Acetic acid bacteria. Bacteria of genus Acetobacter, Gluconobacter, Gluconacetobacter can cause spoilage in beverages like wine, beer, and fruit juices by converting alcohol into acetic acid, leading to off flavors and sourness. Clostridium species. Anaerobic bacteria such as Clostridium perfringens and Clostridium botulinum can cause spoilage in vacuum-sealed or canned foods, often leading to off odors, gas production, and potential foodborne illness. Molds or fungus. Aspergillus species. These molds are often responsible for spoilage in stored grains, nuts, and dried fruits. They produce visible spores and can produce mycotoxins. Penicillium species. While some penicillium species are used in cheese production, others can cause spoilage in cheese and other dairy products. Yeasts. Yeasts like candida can cause spoilage in foods with high sugar content, such as fruits and fruit juices, by producing alcohol and carbon dioxide. How enzymes cause food spoilage. It's important to note that while enzymes are essential for various natural processes in foods, but they can also contribute to spoilage when their activities are not controlled. Lipase. 
Lipase enzymes break down fats and oils into their component fatty acids. This can lead to the development of rancidity, resulting in off flavors and odors in foods containing fats and oils, such as nuts, oils, and fatty meats. Protease. Protease enzymes break down proteins into smaller peptides and amino acids. This can result in changes in texture and appearance, such as the softening of meat and the breakdown of proteins in dairy products, leading to curdling and off flavors. Amylase. Amylase enzymes break down carbohydrates, specifically starches, into simpler sugars. This can lead to changes in texture and taste in starchy foods like bread, pastries, and cooked grains. Pectinase. Pectinase enzymes break down pectin, a complex carbohydrate found in fruits and vegetables. Breakdown of pectin can cause the softening and breakdown of plant tissues, leading to the deterioration of texture in fruits and vegetables. Cellulase. Cellulase enzymes break down cellulose, a complex carbohydrate found in plant cell walls. Cellulose breakdown can cause the loss of structural integrity in fruits and vegetables, resulting in a mushy texture. Oxidative enzymes. Enzymes like polyphenol oxidase, PPO, and peroxidase are responsible for browning reactions in fruits and vegetables when they come into contact with oxygen. Browning can lead to undesirable color changes and off flavors. Amylase and glucoamylase in brewing. In brewing processes, amylase and glucoamylase enzymes break down starches and grains into fermentable sugars, which is desired in brewing beer and other alcoholic beverages. However, if these enzymes are active during storage, they can lead to over-fermentation and off flavors. Lipoxygenase. Lipoxygenase enzymes initiate the breakdown of fatty acids in fruits and vegetables, leading to the development of off flavors, odors, and changes in color and texture. What happens when we consume spoiled food? When food spoils, it undergoes changes due to the growth of harmful microorganisms, production of toxins, and degradation of nutrients. Browning can lead to undesirable color changes and off flavors. Food poisoning. Consuming spoiled food contaminated with pathogenic bacteria, such as Salmonella, E. coli, or Listeria, can lead to food poisoning. Symptoms may include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, and in severe cases, dehydration and organ damage. Gastrointestinal distress. Spoiled food might contain high levels of bacteria and their waste products, causing irritation to the gastrointestinal tract. This can result in symptoms like stomach cramps, bloating, gas, and diarrhea. Foodborne illness. Consumption of spoiled food can result in a foodborne illness, which ranges from mild discomfort to severe sickness. The severity depends on the type of microorganisms present, the amount consumed, and the individual's overall health. Toxin ingestion. Some bacteria produce toxins as they grow and multiply in spoiled food. Ingesting these toxins can lead to symptoms even if the bacteria themselves are no longer present. Common toxins include those produced by Staphylococcus aureus and Clostridium botulinum. Allergic reactions. Mold growth on spoiled food can release allergenic substances into the air. Inhaling or ingesting these substances can trigger allergic reactions in sensitive individuals. Nutritional loss. As food spoils, its nutritional value can degrade. Vitamins, minerals, and other essential nutrients may break down or diminish, reducing the food's overall nutritional content. Unpleasant taste and odor. Spoiled food often develops off flavors, off odors, and changes in texture. Consuming such food can result in an unpleasant eating experience. How to prevent food spoilage. Preventing food spoilage involves a combination of proper food handling, storage, and hygiene practices. Here's a detailed breakdown of how to prevent food spoilage. Here's a detailed breakdown of how to prevent food spoilage. Clean hands and surfaces. Wash your hands with soap and water before handling food to avoid transferring bacteria. Clean cutting boards, countertops, and utensils with hot, soapy water to remove contaminants. Separate raw and cooked foods. Use separate cutting boards and utensils for raw meats, poultry, seafood, and ready-to-eat foods to prevent cross-contamination. Refrigeration. Refrigerate perishable foods promptly, within two hours, to slow down bacterial growth. Freezing. Freeze foods you won't use within a few days to extend their shelf life. Smart shopping. Check expiration dates on packaged foods before purchasing. Inspect fresh produce for signs of spoilage, such as mold, discoloration, or off odors. Proper cooking. Cook foods to the recommended internal temperature to ensure that harmful microorganisms are killed. Reheat leftovers to at least 74 degrees Celsius before consuming. Hot foods, hot. Cold foods, cold. Serve hot foods above 60 degrees Celsius and cold foods below 4 degrees Celsius to prevent bacterial growth. Vacuum sealing. Use vacuum sealed packaging to remove excess air and extend the shelf life of foods. Canning and pickling. Preserve foods by canning or pickling to create environments where spoilage microorganisms cannot thrive. Proper handling of leftovers. 
consume leftovers within 3-4 days or freeze them for longer storage. Hygiene and personal care. Avoid coughing, sneezing, or touching food if you're sick. Be mindful of food storage times. Familiarize yourself with the recommended storage times for different types of foods to avoid consuming spoiled items. Rotate stock. First in, first out. When restocking your pantry or refrigerator, place newer items behind older ones so that you use the older items first. Be cautious with leftovers. If a leftover looks or smells unusual, discard it to avoid the risk of foodborne illness. Educate yourself. Stay informed about food safety guidelines, foodborne illnesses, and best practices for preventing food spoilage. Conclusion. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to understanding food spoilage. By following these tips and understanding the causes, you can enjoy fresh, safe, and delicious meals every day. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more informative content. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Stay healthy and happy cooking.